I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be dating insecure and needy people. Well, this is a really important topic. It's really hard to recognize when you're dating somebody that's needy and insecure because typically needy and insecure people – because I had a woman that I dated many years ago who was like that. And when people suffer from this, oftentimes what they will do is when things don't go well, they're usually not good communicators. So what they tend to do is line up a replacement. And so I've got an email here from a viewer who was in this same kind of situation basically and the woman started lining up the backup lovers, the male orbiters so to speak as soon as things start going sideways. And so it, it's just – I had a phone session with a client today who I've been coaching for about two years now and he originally came to me because the girl that he was dating basically blew him off for another guy who she ended up having a relationship with but yet she from time to time kept in contact and then eventually he really started to own the things that I teach and then he got her back. She came back to him and she even moved to the country where he ended up moving to because of work. Well, they've just now broken up recently because as things – he got busy. He got caught up in his job. He was kind of in, unsure and undecided because he had some you know, some really great opportunities come his way career-wise and he wasn't sure if he wanted to stay where he was or move back to his home country. And so he was kind of vacillating for about a month, month and a half and he wasn't really sure of which direction he was going to go in. And because of that, she started becoming sure. I mean after all, she moved to where he is now to be with him. And so for about a month and a half, he just was not centered and he was not in his core and she started flirting with other guys blatantly right in front of him and not only in front of him but when they were out with groups of mutual friends, she was doing this shit. And when I told him many years ago when we started working together, I was like, dude, this is just how she operates. When she's not happy, she starts lining up the exes and the male orbiters to hook up with them and think if things don't work out. And like here we are today. You got a little sidetracked in life. You went through a difficult period of time. Therefore, she wasn't happy and so what did she do? She starts rubbing other men in your face and she starts lining up other guys. I said, you really – she's a glorified fuck buddy and at least at this point in her life, that's all she's capable of doing. And If you really want somebody to have a monogamous long-term relationship with, she ain't it. And I had all these discussions with him two years ago. And he's like, yeah, I know. And he was dating other women. He was hooking up with other women but he really loved this girl and he wanted a second chance with her. Well, he got a second chance with her. Bottom line, he's got, he got lazy, he got complacent, he got caught up in life and those things are simply going to happen. And if you want to have a long-term healthy relationship with somebody, you got to be with a woman who's going to communicate with you because women who tend to be needy and insecure and if you're a woman dating a guy who's needy and insecure, this is what they tend to do. They line up somebody else because they don't, they're in a fearful state and they don't think it's going to work out. And so now this client of mine is really faced – hopefully this time around he's realizing that, yeah, if I want to have a long-term relationship, she just ain't the girl. But you can still have a hell of a lot of fun with her and treat her like a fuck buddy and what, let her reach out. And when she does, hang out and have fun and hook up while you continue to look for somebody who places a high value on loyalty and commitment. And it's really hard though when you love the other person. I had a woman I dated for about three years and eventually I just got fucking tired of it. I just got tired of the same thing over and over again because it's rude. It's disrespectful. I don't want to have other guys rubbed in my face in order to make me jealous or get me to start treating her different because she was a fucking horrible communicator and she even knew this. She admitted it. There was countless times where she said, well, you know I'm a terrible communicator. I was like, yeah, it's really tough. Relationships are hard enough. But to be in a relationship with somebody that's needy, insecure and a shitty communicator on top of it, it's almost impossible because you're never going to feel comfortable. It's going to be like sleeping with one eye open the rest of your life. So I got a quote that I wrote on this topic and then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says, it's very difficult and challenging to date needy and insecure people. Why? They tend to perpetually be in a fearful state. Their fear of loss can be so overwhelming that they often compensate for this by keeping exes and backup lovers in the background. As long as they are happy and their needs are being met, they will usually be loyal and exclusive. However, 
The moment the future of their primary relationship is in doubt, they will start lining up the X's and backup levers to bounce to if things don't work out. Because they are fearful and believe things probably won't work out, they often will lie to and cheat on their primary lover even though they are still together. If you don't want to spend your life sleeping with one eye open, it's best to only view and interact with needy and insecure lovers in the context of a friends with benefits, sex playmate, fuck buddy, or open relationship. I learned that shit the hard way. And I know a lot of a lot of men and women who watch my videos are in similar situations with people, but it's like you just see the same patterns over and over. Now this particular woman Maybe someday, 10, 20 years from now, or maybe never, maybe she finally realizes that after she gets dicked over a few times that that's really not the best approach, especially because this girl's she like, – I like, think she's 30. Like the client I was talking about earlier, this girl's like 30, 31 now. And so she's still relatively young and really super attractive, but 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, it's not going to be so easy for her to have tons of men after her. As her looks start to fade, it just happens. It's just that's reality. That's the way life happens to be. So let's go through this particular guy's email. He says, "Hey Corey, I'll jump right into it. I've been seeing a girl from America for about seven months now. We work together on a cruise ship, which seems to make a relationship grow much faster than would would want. I mean, yeah, you're around each other all the time." I met this girl at the bar after she asked my coworkers to introduce me to her. Well, she definitely had a high level of attraction for you. That's always nice when things like that happen. But this is just another case in point. When women like you, they're going to put themselves into your orbit in hopes that you know what to do and you make something happen. Attraction is not a choice. She saw you. She liked you. She knew she wanted you. And she conspired with other people to help put her around you so you can make something happen. Things went well and I ended up inside her. After a few weeks, she said she wanted to be exclusive with me and I hesitantly agreed to it. Is there a fucking motorcycle convention? This is where shit got rough. She started controlling me, telling me that I cannot speak to other girls and threatened to break up with me. Oh boy, that sounds like lots of fun. She said that I'm always flirting and that she knows her friends are into me. Again, I told her I'd work on that. We had a conversation one night after heavy drinking and she brought up this guy that she was seeing just before she started to work on the ship. And the only reason a woman's going to tell you about somebody like that is because she's basically saying, hey, things don't work out. This is your replacement, sucker. She's being honest. She's just not telling you everything that's going on or potentially going on. He says they never dated but they did sleep together for a while. Something in me told me that she still had a thing for him, but she was quick to end the conversation saying now they are just good friends. What she's really saying is, well, he's really just my backup fuck buddy. And so if you don't treat me right and you don't give me what I want, I'm going to bounce back to him and start fucking him again. Now, why would a woman who knows that it's not going to go anywhere with this keep somebody like this in her life? Because she's insecure. She needs to have somebody like that around because the thought of being single is too tragic to even ponder, fathom, or contemplate. He says, I told her that I know what guys are like and this dude will definitely jump at the opportunity to sleep with her again. True statement. I totally agree with that. Then one night I found out she was still secretly in contact with him, sending him pictures of places we would visit together. That sucks. You're on dates with this girl and she's sending some other fucking dude pictures. You can't have a healthy relationship with somebody like this. She's keeping him on the hook. She's one of those male orbiters. And again, just stating that they are friends. One night, one of her friends told me that she's planning on meeting up with him once she got back home. I kept that information to myself and wanted to test her a little. When I asked her when last she had spoken to him, she said that they had not been in contact for months, but clearly she was lying. Duh, obviously. That tells you everything you need to know about her. She's a fuck buddy, somebody to have an open relationship with, friends with benefits, sex playmate. That's it. She's not capable of anything else. She's just not the kind of woman 
who is at the point in her life, if she'll ever get there, who knows, who's capable of being loyal. It doesn't mean shit to her. <laughs> How do I know? Look at her actions. She doesn't give a fuck. She's thinking about herself because she's fearful, she's nervous, she's neurotic, she's needy. I told her that I knew about the meetup and she was in shock. I told her, it's kind of weird that you were so crazy about this guy while you were the one who wanted to be in a serious relationship. I broke it off with her a bit later because I did not enjoy having a third party in my relationship. She begged me to come and visit her for Thanksgiving and I agreed. I know that she has been talking to this dude about our relationship since we broke up because she had felt she felt needy and alone. See, she knows that she's got a problem. She now wants our relationship to work. Yeah, as long as she can keep this guy in the background. She's already shown that she has no problem looking you right in the eye and fucking lying to you. You can't trust somebody like this. It's impossible. But makes very few attempts to see me. I'm in a different state of mind at the moment and even offered to pay for a flight but she keeps on being flaky, making up some sort of excuse. After this, I stop responding to her texts as I do not want to reward her with my time. Should I leave and never look back? I'm very successful with work but do I need this shit in my life? Quite frankly, if you want to have somebody in your life who you can have a good exclusive relationship with, this chick is not it, dude. That's the reality. But if you want to get laid and you want to have a good sex playmate, I'd wait to hear from her. When you do, arrange a date. You should not be calling and texting somebody who's blatantly rubbing another woman in your face. I just would wait to hear from her. Try to make a date. If she gives you some BS excuse or won't do it, just say, great. Call me when you figure out your schedule. We'll plan something then. I got to run. See you later. Bye-bye. And then say a few days later or a week later, she reaches out again. Then you try to set a date one more time. That's it. Two separate occasions you're going to try to set dates when she reaches out to you first. And from this point on, I would – this woman needs to do 100 percent of the calling, texting and pursuing from this point forward. You should never contact her again. The only time you should contact her is when you're responding to her messages. And if she turns you down on two separate occasions when she reaches out first, stop asking. From that point forward, if she's texting you or calling you, talk for two to three minutes on the phone if she's calling you or Skyping or FaceTiming you. And if it's a text, send two to three text replies max and always end every conversation with the same response. Hey, it was great hearing from you, but I got to run. Keep in touch. And that's it. One of two things will happen. She'll either stop calling you or contacting you or she'll bring up getting together. And if she brings up getting together, she needs to come to you. Make her fly to you. Don't go – see her fuck that shit look how she's disrespecting you you don't reward disrespect by flying to see her if she wants to have the opportunity to see you she needs to come to you on your terms if she's not willing to do that just say nah if you want to see me you can come see me that would be great I'd love to see you but you know what give me coffee change your mind I gotta run keep in touch that's the way it needs to be with this woman from this point forward if you want somebody to have a great relationship with, never date somebody that, that's like this and think that you can change them or make them into good girlfriend or wife material. It's just not going to happen. As the old saying goes, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. So if you'd like, like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen. And just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 